Hello, welcome back to Paul's Stuff. It's my space on YouTube where I get to talk about all the things I love. Lots of Star Wars, lots of lightsabers. And today is a technical video for lightsabers. So it's one of those videos helping you to work with uh, your uh, Xenopixel V2 or Xenopixel or Xeno3 lightsaber. And um, what I'm gonna try and look at today is how to add the files that you need to add to a Xenopixel V2 sound font in order to make it fully work with a uh, Zeno 3 soundboard. Now, I believe that a Zeno 2 sound font, Xenopixel V2 sound font will work straight away with a Zeno 3, but there are some sound files missing from it and it won't work with all of the new functions. So there are some files that you need to add in. And in a moment, we're gonna to go to the computer and look at, um, if, you, if you've got downloaded files, um, how to um, find and add the sound files that you need into a, a Xenopixel V2 sound font to make it fully compatible with a Zeno 3. Um, we'll also look at um, the new config for the Zeno 3 and look at what you need to put into that in terms of font lines and things like that in order to get your new font to work. So probably best to watch this in conjunction with the um, Xenopixel V2 sound font uh, videos that I've done. If you haven't already watched those, probably beneficial to watch those first because this kind of builds on that. Um, and as always, if you're doing anything with the SD card from your lightsaber at all, please, please, please make a backup of the SD card before you start working on it. Um, if you don't and you lose the files, you will have to go back to your vendor to try and uh, get those files back again. Um, you can avoid all of that just by simply making a backup in the first place. Then if you, things go wrong, you can put the files back onto the SD card and you're back to where you started. You haven't lost anything. Um, so yeah, that all said, let's now took over to the computer and we'll have a look at um, what sound files are missing from Xenopixel V2 sound files in order for them to be fully compatible with Xeno3. Um, where you can find those missing files, um, how to, to rename them and uh, put them into the folder for the font and a very quick look at the Zeno 3 config file and what you need to add there for a new font. Um, so yeah, let's go over to the computer and uh, take a look at what you need to do. Okay, so here we are at the computer um, and we're gonna take a look at um, altering an existing uh, Xenopixel V2 sound font to have all the files it needs to work properly as a Xeno3 font. Um, but what we're going to have a look at first, um, because it's going to be helpful in this process, is the Custom Dark Wolf Sabres website. And in particular, we're going to go to their Xeno3 Pixel RGB um, support page and on here you'll find lots of useful information about the Zeno 3. Um, I'm sure if you're looking at this you'll be aware that the Zeno 3 can operate in either RGB uh, base slip mode or in pixel mode. All of that is explained here. Um, there are videos, there are file downloads, this is where you'll find all the most up-to-date information on uh, the Zeno 3. Uh, but the particular part that we're interested in at the moment, it's a list of all the fonts. 
Um, we are interested in this bit, the Zeno 3 supported font maker file listing. So this is a list of files which will um, work with Zeno 3 sound fonts. Um, and we're going to look at this because this is going to tell us what's missing from the Xenopixel V2 sound fonts. So I'm going to move that over to one side just so we've got it there as a reference. And I'm going to open um, a downloaded sound font. So this is uh, from Ksith. This is Grandmaster, their Yoda sound font. Um, and as you can see, when you open the Grandmaster folder that you download, you get Xenopixel, Verso, Profi, CFX versions, and a load of extras. So we're just going to open the Xenopixel version. Um, we're going to open that so that we can see the whole thing. And I'm going to close that down so that we can really just see those files so that everything else is um, is not in our way. So if we have a look at, at this list, we can see already uh, there are three files here at the top which are missing. So air starts with blaster and this has begin drag, begin lock and begin melt already. So there are a number of files that are missing for the new functions um, in uh, the Zeno 3 from as opposed to the Zeno V2, Zeno Pixel V2. So what we're now going to do, um, we already actually have a source for these with the downloaded folder that we, we looked at. So we'll go back into that folder again. And this time we're going to open the Profi folder. Again, I'm just going to close that, that down so that um, we've just got the, the Profi folder. And if we have a look at this, then um, we can see we've got files that are similarly named. So BGN drag relates to begin drag. Uh, BGN LB begin lock. Um, BGL, BGN LB is actually begin lightning block, which I think has been added in on the end of this list on um, Dark Wolf's page, but it's still missing. So the only ones from here we're not going to look at are pre-on, post-off, pre-in and side out because they're very specific files to a folder that you're, you're using, a font that you're using, and they don't, they wouldn't appear in this font. Um, but you can put those in if you want to. I'll leave you to play with those yourself. Uh, but what we're going to look at is the basic um, files that you will need to add to um, a um, uh, to a Xenopixel V2 sound font in order to get it fully working with a Zeno, Zeno 3. So if we open then, we're looking here, we've got begin drag we need to find. So we'll open the folder for BGN drag. And we've got four versions of it here. Now I'm only going to put one of these in. You can put all four of them in and you just number them exactly the same way as, for example, you've got Blaster here, you've got Blaster 1, Blaster 2, Blaster 3, Blaster 4, Blaster 5, Blaster 6. So these, you would just name them Begin Drag 1, Begin Drag 2, Begin Drag 3, Begin Drag 4. I'm only going to put one in for each. Now one is the minimum that you need, 
Um, if you've got more than one, then I believe the Zeno 3 chooses one of those at random. Um, except for the tracks, which it will play in order. Um, but I think these folder, these files, it, it plays, um, it plays them um, in a random way. So anyway, what we're going to do, we'll um, copy, begin drag, uh, BGN drag one. And we'll come over here and we'll paste it and we can see it's coming at the top and then all we're going to do is go in and we're going to rename that begin drag space open parentheses one close parentheses so begin drag space open parentheses one close parentheses so that's now in a format that the um, that the Zeno 3 will understand what sort of file it is if we look at these um, yep. Sorry about that, I've just um, started some music because <laughs> I, I double clicked on it. Um, if we if we have a look at these, um, so I'm not used to working in, ah. right, so if we look at these, they are exactly the same file. We've just copied it over and renamed it. Um, okay, so exactly the same file. We're just naming it with a convention that um, that the Zeno 3 will understand. So the next one we've got is uh, begin lock. So we go to the folder for that and we copy one of those. And we come over to our folder, our font folder, and we'll paste the item. And we've got begin lock. And we need to put that in as begin lock one, the same naming convention as we had before. So we'll just do that. Begin lock space open parentheses one close parentheses. Okay, and then our next folder is begin melt. So we need to look in the uh, the profi folder from the, the font download for begin melt, and there it is. And we've only got one option this time, so we'll just copy that one. And then we'll paste it in. And we need to rename it. Begin Mount. one okay and we've also got lightning block which we'll do at the, at the same time that's actually down the bottom on um, on uh, on the, the 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 list here it is alphabetical apart from these last two so begin lightning block and end lightning blocker at the end we still need to add them so we'll we'll look in BGN lot uh, BGN LB that sounds like lightning block and yeah so we'll copy one of those like, like I said with all of these that have got multiple versions of the file in the folder you can copy all of them and paste them across but you will need to rename all of them so now we've got 
begin lightning block we need to change the name of this to begin L I G H T N I N G this has been I believe is is spelt incorrectly. I'm just going to check that for you by going into um, one of my already converted Zeno three files and uh, just confirm that. I think it should be lightning block. Yeah, it's begin lightning block. Um, so they've, they've actually misspelled it on here. It is lightning block. Um, and then we need to put the number in. So space, open parentheses, one. Close parentheses. So now we've got all of those begin that we're missing. So if we carry on down, we can see we've got blaster and we've got clash, which is in both lists. And we've got drag. And then our next one on this font folder is font. But we've got end drag, end lock, end melt, and end lightning block before we get to that. So we go back to here, and if we look here, we've got end drag, end lb, end lock, end melt. So we're just going to do the same for those. Um, we will put in end drag. And again, as, as I've been saying all the way along, if you've got multiples of these, you can put more than one in. I'm just putting one in at the moment so that we're not sat watching me typing for hours on end. So we're going to rename that to end drag. Two Ds space open parentheses one close parentheses and then we're going to go to end lightning block end er end lb and we're going to copy that and we're going to pop that into here as well and then we're going to rename it and again this is spelt wrong it should be end lightning block um, no spaces so Uh, we've now got end drag, we've got end lightning block, we need end lock. Started it playing again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. We're going to copy that. And we're going to, no, I don't want a new folder. Mm. 
Right, and we're just going to rename that. End lock, space, open parentheses, one, close parentheses. And the last one in the end series is melt. So we'll put that in quickly. Okay, so we've got all of these in now, and then we go to font, we've got font, force, hum, in, lock. Right, so now we need melt, and we also need to put in lightning block. Um, which isn't is on this list but again is is towards the bottom it's here and if you if you see with this one they've actually spelt it correctly lightning block these these two do have an n missing they should be lightning block um, so we'll go over to our folder again and we want uh, we have already got lock so we don't want that we want melt so we'll copy that paste it into our folder And rename it melt space open parentheses one close parentheses. Now these naming um, conventions with the parentheses and the numbers are important. Um, you do need to put those in. And we want lightning block. So we'll go back here and we have a folder called LB which is our lightning block sound. So we'll copy that. Paste it in. And rename it. Two. Lightning block. Space, open parentheses, one, close parentheses. Okay, so we're now down to, to out on our list. We've got out. Then we have spin and stab. So we go back to our folder here to our, our profi folder from the font download and we find folders that have spin and drag in them and we copy those uh, spin and swing in them rather so we copy those and we'll rename them spin one and as I've been saying all along you you've got multiples of these in the folder you you can copy all of these and just number them accordingly um, you don't have to just have one I'm doing that to save a little bit of time here we'll copy the the spin sound file mm. 
sorry the stab sound file and um, we'll rename that stab space open parentheses one close parentheses and now we have we've got swing H and swing L we already have swing H and swing L are on the list we don't have swing so this is um, all connected with the um, with the uh, accent swings that you now get on um, on uh, on Zeno three. So we do need to have all of these these present to get the accent swings. So we will paste one of those in. And we'll change its name to swing oh, space open parentheses one close parentheses and again you would have multiple swing files um, we have 16 here I believe you can have as many as you want um, 16 is a good number um, but, I, but I believe you can go infinitely on that number it doesn't matter how many you put in and now we're down to track which is the last of airs and we've already got those so now this sound file is ready to use on a Zeno 3 um, soundboard you can pop this onto your SD card for your Zeno 3 um, you will need to add a line into the config file. So um, let's have a look at what the new config file looks like for um, for Zeno three. I'm going to swap to uh, an icon view here because I find that's easier. And we'll look at um, the folder is, is in the Zeno in the Zeno Pixel V2. This folder used to be called Set. It's now called Settings. Um, this is a standard set of, of files that will come on your SD card with a, a Zeno uh, V3. Uh, Zeno 3 rather um, the numbered folders it's exactly the same format as the old Zeno Pixel V2 the numbered folders are your fonts and uh, setting holds all the, the system files including the config file which is what we want to have a look at there's a lot more of them uh, sound files in here than there used to be um, I believe that's for, ready for when things get expanded on the board and more functions and uh, blade effects and that sort of thing are added. Um, but this is the file we're after. We're looking at the config.ini file. That should open with any um, sort of text editor. And... Um, just run through this quickly for you. So we have uh, some information at the top. Um, I will have already said this to you, but before you do anything at all with your SD card from your Sabre, make a backup copy of it. Um, if you lose all the files, you will have to go back to the person that you bought the Sabre from and ask them for another copy of the files. Um, when you buy the Sabre, you're buying the files that are on it as well. They're not free with the Sabre. They're part of the purchase price. So if you lose them, you will have to go back and hope that your vendor can supply you with a copy of the files that were on the Sabre. Um, nobody should be giving them to you for, for, uh, for free. It's really unfair to the people that write the... Um, that write the 
sound fonts and things in the first place so please don't do that if you if you lose these files please go to your vendor and get them but you can avoid all of that by just making a backup copy of them in the first place so make a backup um, then we can see the date that this was created which is 16th of March 2023 um, I believe this is still the most up-to-date version of this then we have a pixel RGB switch so this tells the board whether to work as a pixel board or an RGB board um, so one means it will operate as a pixel board zero means it will operate as an RGB board then we've got blade length that's the same as um, previously in um, in um, the um, the Zeno the Zeno Pixel V2. So this is this is a Yoda font. So we we want this to be a, a shorter blade on this this saber. So it was going to be a twenty eight inch blade, which is around about ninety nine pixels. The blade length is done in pixel count. So um, one hundred and thirty to one hundred and thirty two. Is equivalent to a 36 inch blade um, 114 or so is equivalent to um, 32 inch blade and 99 or to 100 is equivalent to 28 inch blade so we're going to put in 99 doesn't have side blades so we can ignore that um, we can ignore this one as well this is a delay time for the side blades Volume has been harmonized into one volume setting, which is now a percentage of maximum volume. So this is set for 100%, which is maximum volume. Um, we have a brightness setting now that's set the same. Um, flash on clash control, you can turn flash on clash on or off. Not everybody likes to have it on. Um, and you can set the sensitivity of flash on clash, flash or clash, flash on clash. Um, most of these as well, you can set up in the new Bluetooth app. So I'm not going to spend too much time going through these. Um, adjust deep sleep time. Uh, I'm going to adjust the power off to... 6000 um, that's the minimum you can go on that um, you can go between 6 seconds or 6000 milliseconds and 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds it just alters the amount of time you have to press the button to put the uh, the Sabre into deep sleep and um, we've got all the motion controls is all very very similar to the uh, Xenopixel V2 um, pre on blade times same as the Xenopixel V2 um, this line I believe is um, this will this will will take you back to the last selected font when you put the card back in um, I'm not entirely sure what that line does. I haven't played with it enough to, to find out too much yet. This is where you can switch off certain modes on the on the on the um, on the Sabre blade modes. So uh, most of us that have had Xenopixel V2s will be familiar with Blaster and Ghost. They're not really very useful. So you can turn them off here. So um, you can have uh, zero means off one means on so any of these you can have turned on or off and the only one I'm going to turn back on is lightning block because we want that to work uh, switch control sound so this this is um, a nice feature on the Zeno 3 with the Zeno 2 if you didn't have an illuminated button you would had no way of knowing which part of the uh, menu you were going into on the Sabre because there was no indication other than the blinking light um, available to tell you which part of the menu you're going into 
So they've created now a system of bleeps. So now when the light flashes on the Sabre, it will also bleep if this is turned on. Um, so if you were, for example, um, wanting to change the blade effect or the light effect on the blade with the Sabre off, you would press the button and allow that button to flash twice. And that would take you to the next setting on that menu. Well, now it will bleep twice as well if this is turned on. So we'll turn that on. As Yoda say, the Sabre doesn't have a lit button. And what we need to do for this, this font is set up one of these font lines. So um, we, we would go into here and um, we would put, if, if we're putting this font in on top of all the other fonts, we would put font 35 equals. The format is very similar to the Xenopixel V2. So these first three figures in brackets are the color of the blade. Um, so red, green, blue. Um, if you want uh, 255 is the the most of that color zero is none of that color so if we look at this top one for example this is red green blue so there's no red no green all blue um, if we wanted a green one for Yoda then this second figure would be 255 and the other two would be zeros next is our um, a default hum light effect so on here what you change the number depending on what um, uh, blade effect you want when the, the blade is just humming so fire blade um, is, is zero steady blade is one unstable blade is two rainbow blade is three candy blade is four crack blade is five Pulse blade is six and flashing blade is seven. Um, the next four figures um, here, that the ones that are zero on this top line, they are for um, your blaster light effect, your force light effect, your lockup light effect, effect, and your flash on clash light effect. And there are three options on those. Zero, one, or two. So depending on what you put got in there, um, then uh, that will change how the light effect for blaster block, force effect, lock up, or flash on clash looks. Um, the last of those figures is. Um, your blade style so um, the options for this are standard blade which is zero which is what this one is set to then we have velocity blade um, this is a, a blade effect where the blade will light partially when you turn the saber on and the faster you move it the more of the blade will light up uh, torch blade emulates a flaming torch blaster mode um, is a, a hangover from xenopixel v2 this is um, one of those little used modes from the v2 um, this kind of turns the, the lightsaber into a blaster. So nothing on the blade will light until you press the button and then you'll get a blaster bolt that goes along the blade. Um, Ghost blade similarly is um, a, um, is a, another V2 blade effect. Um, this is one where um if the blade is if the if the saber is still then i believe they've altered it 
slightly now that it, that it's very dim and the more you move the saber the brighter the the saber gets um because i i, I think because uh zeno one of the features of zeno 3 is that you're now able to control the brightness of the blade that can be done by the board as well so on the v2 in ghost mode if the blade is still the blades off and you don't get any light until you you start moving it around um with the v the, the zeno 3 i think it's um the blade is um is dim and gets brighter the, the, the quicker you move it around and then we have um the last uh of, of the numbers you can put in here five six seven eight nine ten and eleven are the ignition styles so um broken ignition photon ignition all of those ignition styles that were there on the, the zeno v2 the zeno pixel v2 are here as well and that is that that last figure before you get to the two larger figures at the end so we can see this first one is set up as a fire blade Um, or sorry as a standard blade that's a zero and this next one down is set up as a velocity blade uh, oh no sorry is is set up as 10 so that, that has one of the ignition styles on it I think that's um, a ray sound font so I believe that's the scavenger ignition Um, and then the last two figures on these lines are uh, the ignition time and the retraction time for the blade. So they get the, these are in milliseconds. So uh, 200 milliseconds for the blade to go from the bottom, uh, uh, from the hilt to the tip of the blade and 650 milliseconds for the blade to go from the tip of the blade back into the hilt. So that's the lines you will add, have to add a line appropriate for this folder when you when you come to that so we'll just get rid of this um so yeah that's our, our sound font ready now the first time you put it in to the saber um, and you select it it may say something like um database error that's because um, when these folders are first used now, the Sabre will actually write um, a file to the Sabre that tells it what files are in, the, in that folder. Um, called a dot .font folder, a dot .font file. Um, if you have a Mac, it will be hidden. You will have to press shift command full stop to see it. Um, you really don't need to worry about it. Um, but you may well find that the first time you use this font, you have to select it. Go on to the next font and then go back to it. And from there on in, it will function perfectly normally because the Sabre will have written that little dot font file for you. Um, and it's all there. So, yeah. That's um, what you need to know in order to swap a Xenopixel V2 based sound font to a Zeno 3 sound font. Okay, so welcome back. Um, hopefully that was useful for you. Um, we've looked at how to uh, basically how to convert Xenopixel V2 files to Xeno3 full compatibility and some of the some of the little things that you need to know about um, in the config file um, and also just to, that, to reiterate what I said on the, the end of the computer part of the video um, when you first use one of these fonts the Sabre will write um, a file into the font folder it's called a dot font file 
Um, and as I said, on, on a, a Mac, it will be a hidden file. So if you want to see it on a Mac, um, then you will need to press shift command period or full stop. Um, and that will bring up the hidden files and you'll see it then. Um, it's, it's named dot font and I, I believe it comes up as an exe file. Um, if you do ever need to go into it, um, you can get into it using text edit. Um, it's not actually an exe file. Um, it comes up that way because the Mac sees it as a system file. Anyway, it's actually not that important. If, if um, you don't really need to worry about it, beyond the fact that when you first put a new font on an SD card, the first time you select that font, it will probably tell you that there's a data error. Um, you, you then need to go past that font to the next one and then go back to that font. When you go back to it, it will play perfectly normally because at that point, the um, Sabre will have written that dot .font file. But that's why the Sabre does that when you put a new font on. It's not a fault, it's just a feature of how things are at the moment with that dot .font file needing to be written. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that, that interesting. Um, if you have, please consider giving the video a like. Uh, that lets YouTube know that um, people are liking this type of content and uh, makes it far more likely that other people can find it. Um, if you like the content generally, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, the channel's really about helping out the community, in particular the community around these uh, Nexus lightsabers that I love so much. Um, and yeah, to that end, the more people that know about it, the better. Um, the more subscriptions there are, the more likely other people are going to are to find out about it as well so if you haven't already and you like the content please do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell when you subscribe and you'll get told whenever i make a new video so thanks for watching all the way through that that video i know these can be a bit tedious but um i like to cover all the detail in them that i can so that you've got as much information to be able to do these things as easily as possible for yourselves um, there's, there's nothing worse than getting a new saber and finding that you can't find out how to do anything on it. So these videos are to try and help with that a little bit. So thanks for watching all the way through to this point. If you have watched it till now, you'll know that there's only one thing left to say and that's cheerio.